Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar on Win the SERPs, a story of SERP feature trends by industry, keyword and device with me, Gerald Murphy from SimilarWeb. Today, what we're going to be looking at is how complex the SERP is itself. We're going to be comparing the US and UK markets in terms of SERP feature trends, as well as identifying the top SERP features that you should be looking at, optimizing as part of your 2022 search strategy. Crucially for today's presentation, we're going to be breaking SERP features down by industry, as well as summarizing with some best practices so you can win the SERPs. SERP features exist to help us find information, but it's complex. 15% of Google searches have never been seen before, and that's from just one free access search engine. There are many others out there. In fact, there's about 20 regularly used free access search engines, including Bing and DuckDuckGo. So there's actually a lot of keywords out there that have never been seen before. But crucially, from a search engine's perspective, they need to construct a search engine results page. And doing that with keywords they've never seen before is also quite complex. Roughly speaking, when we find information, we do it of one of two ways. We push, for example, you could be on Google Chrome and looking at Google Discover. Alternatively, you could be pooling information. For instance, having a conversation with a friend and asking them questions to pull, to retrieve information. When we pull to find information, we, on a SERP, we have three different modes of search. The first is look up, the second is learn, and the third is investigate. And this is exactly why SERP features themselves exist. When we look up information, we're often doing carefully specified queries around things like fact retrieval and known item search. And some examples of SERP features would be things like featured snippets and instant answers. When we learn, there's some type of process involved. For instance, for knowledge acquisition, it could be more of a cognitive process involved. For instance, it could be using a local pack to try and find out how do I get from A to B using directions. And third and finally, we have investigate, which is when search at its best has a session. There's loads of queries that have been searched. As a result, a lot of analysis and evaluation occurring. And that's why, for instance, things like related questions and related searches exist within this particular mode of search. Broadly speaking, this is a simplified view of the search process. So when it comes to SERP features from a keyword perspective, did you mean as a keyword SERP feature? is going to reduce naturally as voice search increases. Voice search is by no means perfect when you have very strong accents. Equally, it can get things out of context, but it never gets misspells. It never misspells keywords that it hears. So that's going to completely remove that as a SERP feature. Processing, on the other hand, is really better understanding the query. As mentioned before, 15% of searches have never been seen before on Google. This is where processing comes into play. What the search engine is trying to do is not just work out based on that particular query. They're trying to work out what would that searcher likely search for next to help inform them what types of information and SERP features as a result should we be showing them. And finally, where today's presentation is going to focus on is around the results. So looking at the SERPs and SERP features themselves. Our online behaviors further complicate the SERP and SERP features. We've got six different types of behaviors and SERP features can really help us to overcome a lot of these different behaviors. But actually the ultimate aim is to make sure we can quickly find access to the information that would suit our needs. Zero clicks further complicate SERP interactions. So, we shouldn't really be when we're looking at keywords, just be looking at search volume and just be looking at the actual keyword itself. We need to look at a range of other metrics. For example, in this case, zero clicks. And what that allows us to do is to start to account for the SERP interaction and behaviors. When, for example, people search for Biden age worldwide, 95% of people click on nothing. In other words, the SERP actually answers this particular query. It's actually a learn query where we're actually trying to do some type of processing. In this case, it is cognition, where we're actually learning, in this case, the age of the United States president. Other keywords, for example, like capital of Canada, have even more zero clicks. And again, because it's not in growth phase, doesn't mean this is a bad keyword. 
what we need to be doing as brands is to have a really good awareness of where the SERP interaction is so we can better win online. SERP features exist to help us with these three modes of search. And anyone that's new to this, we're going to be talking about SERP features. And this is an example of four SERP features. Within each of these, you'll see there's different elements or components, if you like. So in the far left-hand side of this slide, you'll see there's what we call product listing ads at the very top. Towards the middle of this SERP feature, you've also got Google Maps. So let's dive in so you can win the SERPs. Before we do that, I want to just quickly recap some of the methodology we used. We wanted to find out, were there any SERP feature trends for the US and UK markets? We also want to identify the top 10 most prominent SERP features across branded and non-branded keywords, as well as by device of mobile and desktop. And crucially for today's presentation, we wanted to find out SERP feature trends by industry in both of these markets. To do that, we analyzed 4 billion keywords across the US and UK. We did so across 27 different SERP features, looking from January 2020 to February 2022. And we did this across 12 industries. Going forward in today's presentation, when we talk about branded keywords, we basically mean it has a direct association with a brand. So for example, Walt Disney. Whereas when we talk about non-branded, it basically means that that particular keyword can apply to multiple businesses, for instance, office chair or standing desk. Some of the industries we looked at include, for example, e-commerce and shopping, news and media, travel and tourism. And on the far right hand side, you can also see the, some of the SERP features that we analyze that range from things like apps, flights, local pack or maps, as well as things like videos. In this section, when we talk about SERP features, we're excluding these four SERP features of images, related questions, related searches, and organic inline site links. And the reason for that is a significant amount of these keywords have these four basic SERP features. They may just have one of them. In some cases, they have all four of them. In essence, this is almost like the modern 10 blue links from a SERP feature perspective. In fact, in the UK market, 47% of keywords have these SERP features or have SERP features that trigger one of these four SERP features, if not all, in July 2021. So let's look at the SERP features themselves. Overall, SERP features are increasing quite significantly, particularly in the United States versus the UK but there's still a significant opportunity. We're still talking in the UK over 50 million keywords that are actually triggering SERP features that don't include those four basic ones we previously looked at. Non-branded in the UK is a little bit more flat line versus the United States where it's actually growing. So all of those keywords, for example, relating to Walt Disney, Sony, Netflix, and so on, there actually are increasing the number of those in the SERPs. Non-branded, again, is much bigger in the US versus the UK. And in fact, it's actually much more in the decline phase here in the UK. Having said that, it's still a massive opportunity. The number of keywords triggering SERP features by device is also much bigger in the US versus the UK, where it seems to be actually much less so on mobile for the UK market. You can actually see that the last four to five months has been in the decline phase. When we take a big look at SERP features over long periods of time, you can see there's actually a lot of overlap of those SERP features. So related searches, related questions, images, paid and video are the top five SERP features for both markets. But SERP features are highly volatile. So when you look at them, in a shorter space of time, you'll see there are some core differences. So for example, you can see that hotels on the right-hand side from December 2021 to February 2022 is the most dominant SERP feature in the UK. It's the second most dominant in the United States, but also a few other interesting things. For example, jobs doesn't occur in the top 10 of the UK, but it does in the US. And instant answers is a massive opportunity, the third largest in the United States. That's not the case at all in the UK. 
SERP features are volatile. So it's always important to be looking at which ones are prominent, but always looking at the trends and the rates of growth of that. Interestingly, product listing ads have been increasing quite significantly across both markets, which again is very much in line with things like Google's own revenue as well. But making sure when we're looking at SERP features, we're not just always looking at them at a snapshot in time. We're trying wherever possible to look at the trends of those features too. And search engines aren't just volatile. Search engines are becoming more and more real time. When we went into a lockdown in March 2020, SERP features took a little while to actually reduce the number of Google Maps on the results. When you look at the second and third lockdown, they did that in the space of a few weeks. Super interesting and really highlighting that SERP features are becoming more, not just volatile, but much more in tune with what's happening in the environment today. Overall, all SERP features are growing except for video in the UK market. Now, again, if you don't have a YouTube specific strategy, this may be a good strong indication if you do a lot of video to look at your YouTube strategy, because it seems to be for brands that are relying on Google to increase their performance on YouTube, we maybe want to really diversify and have an integrated search strategy. So let's jump in the SERP features by industry. So in e-commerce, the top three SERP features are product listing ads, images, and videos. Also just note in the middle of this graph, you can see instant answers and local pack are the second and third largest opportunities in the United States. This section is all by default, ranked by those that have the biggest opportunity for the UK market. Food, drink, groceries, product listing ads, local and images. Again, significant opportunity here for instant answers in the United States. Sports, a lot of stuff happening around Twitter, news and featured tables in this case for both markets. Food, drink, restaurants and delivery. You can see the top three SERP features are local pack, knowledge graph and related searches. But interestingly, Knowledge Graph is a much bigger opportunity in the United States versus the UK. Mental health, featured lists, featured answers, related questions, related searches are the three top most prominent SERP features across both markets. Jobs and careers, no surprise. Jobs is the largest SERP feature within the jobs and careers space. Law and government, much more diverse a lot more things happening. This is also an indirect indication of EAT content, expertise, authority, and trust. So things like jobs, featured answers, Twitter, knowledge graph, featured tables, news, instant answers, all providing quite significant opportunities in the UK market. Beauty cosmetics, featured snippets, featured lists, PLAs, videos, Really, really prominent SERP features. Also, interestingly, instant answers is much bigger than it in the US than it is in the UK. Fashion, product listing ads, images, paid search, and local pack all providing significant opportunities. News and media is the most diverse and rich from a SERP feature perspective. News, featured lists, featured answers, featured tables, all really really prominent in here but actually it's much more distributed and this is the future actually of all the other industries themselves so specifically even if you don't work in news and media have a look and see what's going on particularly from a SERP feature perspective of these big publisher websites because this actually is where i believe SERP features will eventually get to for all of the other industries travel again no surprise flights and hotels are the most prominent SERP features so now you can see that SERP features are growing. Some of them are much more prominent in some industries than others. So what can you now do with this information? Let's look at a few top tips so you can win the SERPs. The first is don't ignore your branded SERP feature keywords and SERP features themselves. In fact, for your branded keywords, you can actually create your own SERP features. For instance, your contact us page can that be written so that it actually can start pulling up, for instance, a telephone number and an email address as part of an instant answer if you actually structure your content and don't make making sure that it's not just thin, heavy content. Like good SEO search engines classify keywords, classify your keywords. 
rather than just looking at keywords at its really basic old school way of informational, navigational, transactional, or even worse, commercial or non-commercial keywords, make sure we're looking at keywords in terms of the buyer's journey phase, awareness, consideration, decision, and intent. But crucially, this really provides a backbone and opens up your entire search strategy because you're able to start getting in and start to create an integrated search strategy, which we'll talk about shortly. So how do you do that? Simply just tag your keywords into these four stages of the buyer's journey to unlock SERP feature trends. So let's imagine, for example, you work for a stationary company. The keyword paper would be called an awareness keyword. It's broad. The searcher doesn't know what they want. Therefore, it's more of an awareness keyword. Consideration, on the other hand, is when someone's doing a search for print or paper. They're a little bit closer to what they want. Therefore, it'd be called a consideration keyword. Decision is when the searcher knows what they want. In this case, A4 print or paper. And finally, you've also got inspirational, which is outside the box thinking. How can I make an airplane out of print or paper, for example? And what you want to do is once you've tagged this up, and if you're strapped for time, just do it for your largest business unit initially, then move on to your other priority lines of businesses. And what this will start to uncover for you is show you by each stage of the buyer's journey, what are the most prominent SERP features so that you can better understand what's going on within your universe. So for example, in the case of stationery, are there a lot more video opportunities for inspirational types of content and keywords? Are there a lot more opportunities for us to increase our brand awareness, for example, via instant answers for those keywords that sit within the awareness phase of the buyer's journey? Review the latest SERP feature trends and making sure you're aware of what they are within your space. As we saw previously, hotels are a massive opportunity right now in the UK. Again, it makes sense. There's currently no laws for COVID. Therefore, hospitality sector is completely opening up. And as a result, things like SERP features are becoming really prominent within this particular market. If you're focusing on video, keep a closer eye on video trends, particularly for those brands who are getting a lot of traffic from Google, ranking for YouTube videos. And again, just simply use this to build out your integrated search strategy. When you see things like Amazon double bubbles, that might be a good indication that you maybe want to consider an Amazon strategy. So in this case in the UK, Amazon is ranked more than once in the results for the term LED lights. That can be a nice indication that we should potentially be looking at an Amazon specific strategy. James Bond, for example, has a lot of video opportunity there. They've got video timelines and so on. As a result, we may want to think about our YouTube specific strategy. But as we saw in the previous slide, video is in the slight decline phase in the UK. So potentially having a YouTube specific strategy has never been more important. Constantly review your SERP features using a range of different metrics. There's two core ways of doing that via the similar web platform. The first is looking at an individual keyword or topic. Or secondly, you can also just look at a collection of different keywords, for example, electricals or paper, as we saw earlier. And what that will allow you to do is to see what are the most prominent SERP features for that keyword list. The second way of doing this is by looking at domains. So which, what are my competitors doing? What SERP features do they actually rank for and gain traffic from? That can actually help you to get a better idea of what are competitors doing for SERP features. And of course, know your industry SERP features, structure your keywords out, review the trends on a regular basis and review information. For example, our SERP feature report, simply download it for free. Um, on the left-hand side, you can click that link and we're going to update it with today's data that we've done as part of this analysis. Alternatively, if you want to read the report, you like it, also book a demo with one of the guys in the go-to-market team. They'll be able to show you with examples in your particular market and language, what the SERP feature opportunities are for your business. So to summarize it up so, so far, we have many different SERP feature behaviors and SERP features simply exist to help us find quality information as quickly as possible. There are significant opportunities in both the US and UK markets. And interestingly, SERP features are becoming much more sophisticated and plugging into real time, real life data. For example, as we saw in the UK, maps decreasing 
when lockdowns, for example, occurred. These things have never happened before. So categorize your keywords, monitor them by the four stages of the buyer's journey of awareness, consideration, decision, and inspiration, so that you can not only just start building out your search strategy, but actually have a better idea of what SERP features are triggered for each of those stages of the buyer's journey. Thank you so much for your time. Hope you enjoyed.